when I started covering the Israeli parliament, I thought to myself, wow, this is awesome. This is where key decisions are made. I attended discussions regarding beautiful reforms, regarding our minimum wage, our education system, our army service, and that was just my first day. Immediately I realized how relevant the parliament is to my everyday life. But the public couldn't see it. You want to know why? Well, if I witnessed the Knesset members, our politicians, destroy beautiful reforms, reforms that could cut my monthly rent, or the commissions we pay to the bank by 50%, the evening news would show the Knesset to the public only if a scandal would happen. A scandal like this one. So she threw water on that Knesset member, and that most of the Israelis remember, and it's engraved in their mind, but not the reforms. One day I understood it could be different, that I can make the Knesset sexy. I was bored, and I strolled the Knesset's corridors looking for some action. So I randomly picked a session and went inside. I sat in the back nearly alone and watched the committee members that were in a rush to approve a certain amendment. I was curious, so after some digging, I found out that the complex legal terms actually meant something very simple. One lucky individual was going to receive an additional million dollars towards his pension. So I asked the minister promoting this change whether he knew this lucky individual. He said he didn't. Okay, after some more snooping around, I knew that that individual was a, some politician from the South, a member of the minister's party, and his friend. I remember thinking that every cent I ever paid or will pay in taxes were going to be dumped into this guy's bank account only because he had the right friend. How dare they? Well, let me tell you. In Israel, we don't really know who our representatives really are, who they meet, which information they are being fed with, and nothing about their decision-making process. It's all in the dark. Zero political transparency. The media, focusing, as you've seen, mainly on scandals, helps perpetuating this darkness. Regarding that pension amendment, I decided to not let go. I wrote about it and asked endless questions. And once the public noticed, it was game over. The minister canceled that law, and the money stayed in the public treasury, our treasury. <laughs> it's okay, but this time we won. But imagine how many times we didn't. Either because there were no sources to leak the information, or because there wasn't anyone bored enough to stroll into a committee. I wanted to change it, because there aren't enough reporters, and because the Knesset, the Israeli parliament, is everything but boring. It's actually an aquarium. It's an aquarium packed with sharks, swordfish, and eels, and they all swim in opposite directions, collide, and create beautiful explosions. Those explosions usually happen underneath the surface. But when the public do notice, things change. I had other encouragements besides that pension amendment. When I revealed the pistachio ice cream our prime minister managed to buy with public money, the public was outraged, and Netanyahu canceled that expense. When I showed the huge budget allocated to the prime minister's private house, it was reduced. We now save millions. That's the power of transparency. But again, we have to rely upon sources or colorful topics. I looked jealously abroad uh, to the United States, where every citizen can see who sits with the president in the White House. The UK, where the prime minister must answer questions. Questions to the Prime Minister. Yeah. And the kick in. Question number one, Mr. Speaker. That happened every Wednesday at noon. 
or Germany, where the parliament is literally transparent. So how do you wake up the people in Israel and make them give a sh sorry, make them care? <laughs> well, I became... I became a journalist because I wanted to write books. Like many of my colleagues, I actually wanted to be an author. Now my mom, she's a huge Agatha Christie fan. Anyone knows Agatha Christie? She's a murder mystery novelist, and I knew that all those explosions I witnessed, that's everything I need for a novel. And I wanted people like my mom, my mother, to read it. So I wrote a suspense thriller that takes place in the parliament. It starts with a dead body being found in the Knesset's storeroom, and while the readers try to figure out who committed the murder, where, and with what, they actually learn how the Committee of Legislation works in the dark, how lack of transparency enables politicians to be corrupt, or how flirting and sex in the Knesset really looks like, because sex sells, right? I hope. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the book was published and uh, well-received, but people didn't storm the Knesset gates as I imagined they would. People didn't demand change. And then, something happened. While researching a financial motive to one of the suspects in my book, I came across politicians who own stocks. Yes, in Israel, I found out, our politicians can secretly own stocks. Think about it. They can vote with one hand and buy or sell a stock with the other through their phone, and we have no way of knowing it. That was too much. I even learned through leaks that many of them have gas company stocks, the same companies that receive exceptional terms, exceptional legal terms from the parliament. So I implored our Knesset members, our politicians, to at least make their stocks public, transparent, like in the US. There, by the way, I knew, if you follow the politicians' stocks, which are public, you usually earn more than average. And that's a fact. So this isn't a matter of left and right. This is something everyone can get behind, right? Apparently not. The heads of coalition threw the weight in and in the last minute squashed the proposal. That moment I realized books were not enough. Investigative stories are not enough. I'm not enough. The public itself must demand transparency. Only then it would be hard to be corrupt. Transparency actually guards them. Think about it. When the table is transparent, you can't pass an envelope underneath it. One year ago, I went on and founded an independent project called 100 Days of Transparency. I wanted to get enough money from the public to get investigators that will follow politicians who oppose transparency. I wanted to show that we need private detectives to see what they're actually doing. I thought this idea was too extreme, but I wanted to legally find out what they're hiding, or at least make them sweat while hiding it. I donated 2% of the sum I requested myself of the fear of being humiliated. This could have been the end of my career, the end of my reputation. But then the public showed up. I raised almost 200% uh, of what I requested. Nearly 2,000 people donated. Now when I write about an injustice, I have an army with me. People can actually become involved instead of just shaking their heads while reading about a scandal in the papers. We at the Days of Transparency use genuinely new methods of journalism. We are calling the public to tell us if their landlords are politicians so we can publicize their flats. We reveal their assets. We show their expenses. We use volunteers to take pictures of them in cafes so we can know who they meet with. Who wouldn't like to know how many apartments the Minister of Treasury has, the one that influences housing price? Or that the Speaker of the Knesset is drinking coffee on a work day with some businessman? Or that the Minister of Health cuts lines in a hospital? 
when she broke her hand. The money also enabled some crazy ideas I had, like offering a financial reward for information regarding a certain corruption. That drove the system insane. Now, politicians say we're too nosy, that it's gossip. But that's how you make the Knesset, the Israeli parliament, sexy. And the way we see it, nothing to do with the parliament can be gossip. This is not some supermodel's wedding. This is the place where our reality is being crafted. So we gather as much information as possible and publish it all in a big online database. But we want change, not headlines. So recently we created another project. It's called Lobby 99. For the first time ever, we are employing a lobbyist that represents the public interest and not the super rich. We successfully crowdfunded, and more than 1,000 people made donations and guide her. We just had a poll, a poll about what she will be focusing in the coming session, and transparency ranked first. I tell you this. Transparency laws are continuously shut down. The politicians fight us, and they fight dirty. They recently revoked my permit entry to the parliament. Can you believe that? But with every blow we receive, our supporters base grows bigger. And with the help of technology, for the first time, we can come together, unite, and make sure they legislate transparency laws that will render us useless. We can make sure all around the globe that through transparency, politicians are working for us and not the other way around. Thank you.